When I was 14 years old, I showed 4-H beef steers on the island of Maui in Hawaii for two years in a row. That would be my first experience with cattle. Woo! And then when um, I turned 18 and was on my own and I bought a piece of land, I bought some goats and then some cows. Um, I've raised commercial cows, I don't know, 20 plus years. I go back to my 4-H years, almost 30 years. And um, six years ago, we bought our first Brahmin bull, registered Brahmin bull, a red one. I do not know why. I just thought they looked so unique. And I'd always told my husband, you know, that I wanted a red Brahmin bull. And so we saw one in the Ag Review paper. We went to the Elm Tree Farm and bought um, a bull I named him General Ambrose, but his registered name was ET4, Elm Tree 4. And um, he was just an awesome bull, and after that I was just hooked. And I had to go get him girlfriends, and we got rid of all the commercial cows, and now all our cows are registered. These are mama cows, and they have babies over there, but you're not between them and their babies. That's Dolly, she's pretty sweet. You look like a doll. It's like feeding the hungry hippo. <laughs> and we breed for temperament. Hey girl. Being in my mid 50s, I really don't want any rank cows to have to look after. I don't think I need them all to be um, oversized dogs. <laughs> but a few like this that have this personality though, ensure that they don't ever leave my farm. So um, maybe maybe she's kind of smart. I don't know. Do you want to know where cow licks come from? Yeah, that was good. <laughs> I've got my herd numbers about where I want them. Um, this year we calved out a dozen registered Brahmins from Mama Cows. Come here. This is Spartacus's mom, and uh... <laughs> that's this is mom. Yes. And Minnie Pearl's mom. This is why she's so sweet. This one. I have about a dozen more heifers that um, are up and coming. That like the one that was just kissing on me, Minnie Pearl. That by the time all my heifers that I have calf, I mean get to where they're calving, I'll have a little over 20 cows, and um, that's plenty. That's sort of my goal. After that, it'll sort of be. Um, Pull out some of the older ones or you know just natural attrition of if they don't calve back or some things like that and add every now and then a really nice quality one from a lot of my Brahmin friends. I really have met so many amazing people because of raising Brahmins that every time I meet somebody and go to their farm I'm like I want one of theirs. I want one. I want one of every brand including my own in, in my farm. When you feed treats to these big dogs, you kind of need to be careful because they outweigh you and not let them get in your face too much. You have Spartacus's full sister behind you, and this is Garnet. She's super sweet too. This is at what point you just don't want to make a really fast move because you don't want them. Um, you have Dolly behind you, big cow. <laughs> but, um, I run two separate style bowls. So um, I have some cows here and some at my farm about a mile from here as the crow flies. So I have two herd sires, a Spartacus that you met and Dakota Red. And so um, Dakota Red is um, the daddy to about half of mine. And this is Spartacus's Spartacus. full sister. This is the mom. This is, I breed for this temperament. You guys are obnoxious. They're big, so you need to be careful. But <laughs> Kenneth Bryles of Bryles Farm Brahmins is very, very, very supportive. He loves the Brahmin cows as much as I do, but he is a little bit more behind the scenes. We met when I was about 25 and he was 27, and I had this farm and I needed a farmer. It just worked out really good. I had a couple goats at the time and a little pony for my son 
because of him, we, we purchased our first cows, commercial cows. My grandparents both were farmers. That was pretty common in this area though. You either farmed or you saw milled or made liquor about 50 years, or was 75 plus ago around here. So they were farmers and uh, I think they were more the consumers and the makers of the liquor, so. This is my silent, quiet husband who works so hard so that I can collect beautiful cows. Is that true? Yep. Yep. <laughs> a man of few words. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I think it was kind of a mutual decision. We both uh, talked about uh, how much we like Red Brahmas. And uh, with the commercial cows, it was just, uh, just so tough, tough a road. And uh, we just thought, well, you know, maybe the registered uh, herd and then uh, the Red Brahmas not being so common around here, maybe it would be a sort of a niche market. I don't know, it just... We saw one in the We saw an ad for a bull one day and we said, let's go get it. So, <laughs> We're just yeah. adventurous. Yeah. It wasn't like we were already making a ton of money. I mean, it's very hard with commercial cows to break even. Absolutely. So it was like, live your passion, live your dream. And if you're gonna be doing it, do something that, you know. Yeah. We both said, God, those cows with humps and long ears just look so cute. For me, I really enjoy nurturing things. And so um, any kind of livestock, whether it was goats or cows, but now our focus is these cows, these Brahmin cows. This is Spartacus. I love Spartacus. Spartacus is a uh, three. Hey, buddy. Hey, Spartacus. Hey, handsome. Hello, handsome sir. So, the American Brahmin cow was um, the first registered breed created in America. Okay? okay, he's not the American Brahmin is not the first cattle here. So the Europeans we brought over, you know, Angus and the Herefords and the Charlets and the European milk cows, the Jerseys and the Guernseys and the Holsteins. Well, ranchers down in Texas, where it's very hot and humid and swampy and buggy, those cows didn't thrive. After a year or two, they just quit having calves. They just weren't thrifty. So some ranchers down in South Texas were gifted some cattle from India, the country of India, and some cattle from South America. And these cattle were um, like the heat. They're from hot places. So they used the gear, the Nalore, the Guzerat, and a few other lesser breeds um, to create the American Brahmin cattle. The American Brahmin cattle, so it was the first registered breed of cows in America. Since the American Brahmin, they have used it to create all sorts of other breeds in this country. Some of them are really easy to figure out. That would be the Brangus, uh, Beefmaster, Charbrays, Santa Gertrudes, and uh, Gelbys. Um, and why they use the American Brahmin in those cross as, as a, uh, they call it the common denominator, is because you get hybrid vigor, you get, they have a great feed conversion better than European cows, they're heat tolerant, they're disease resistant, uh, so many things. So having part Brahmin in those other registered breeds really, in, you know, it's just a great recipe. Um, it's kind of like you, if you were baking, you put sugar in everything, right? So Brahmins are sort of like that. The heritage lines, the gear, the Nalore, the Guzerat, he's gear style. Amer I mean, he's, he's Brahmin. The characteristics of Brahmins are these big ears and these humps, and probably about 70% of Brahmin are gray or white, and the others are red. And so he's kind of heritage style, a gear Brahmin. Part of those characteristics are he's a little bit taller. Um, they have, uh, the gear have really nice dispositions. They're typically red or speckled, but they kind of come in a lot of colors. The mama gear cows make a lot of milk. They have a much more domed head. Um, they have maybe a little bit longer ear. Sometimes they'll call it a banana ear because it curves a little bit more than some of the other open Brahmin. When we go look at the show heifers, you're going to see more the American style. It's a little just a... Uh, a little more beefy maybe, but I mean, they're still all the same breed. 
they're American Brahmin. What I do with the registered Brahmins, it's called seed stock. My calves are seeding other people's breeding programs. But it is ultimately because of um, steaks and hamburgers that we all have a business. I mean, that's the ultimate, that's why we raise them, okay? Now, Spartacus will never be somebody's hamburger or steak. No one will ever eat this. I love this bull and he'll die on my farm. Oh, he's giving you kisses for it. <laughs> he's burped in my face. Oh. But, um, so, but seed stock is a lot nicer to raise, in my opinion, than commercial cows where everything just goes to the sale barn once a year. And um, I meet a lot of amazing people because of this breed of cows. Our goal is to get people to realize how awesome Brahmins are. You pet them. Here, give them a treat. Show me how. Gotta go like this though. Watch out, it's like feeding the hungry hippo. The way their tongue is, oh. it's, it, it's hard for them to get it out of that way. I'm nervous. Okay. Well, when he opens up, just put it in there. And you've oh, got bottom easy. teeth. Yeah, but you just, you do. That was easy. That was easy. Uh, that one's really small. It makes me nervous. I give him a taller, a longer. Oh, I dropped it. You just got to slobber all over me. me? Yeah. That's okay to slobber me. Yeah, you want me to pet you? Hi. That's probably mostly what you want. Oh, you just want some love. Is that okay where I'm petting yeah. you? Oh, gosh, like yes. a spot? Yeah. Is there a sweet spot for you? Oh, handsome boy. Hello, is there a sweet spot? Brahmin's hide has lanolin in it, like sheep. Oh, My friends and I call it hump grease and say it's the best therapy for yes, everything. Sweet boy. It helps them with um, bug and disease resistance. Interesting. Um, but their skin is just a little bit oily. Can we pet mm. him? Come up here and pet him. On, Especially while I'm rubbing this dewlap. He's just hey, gonna love him. that. He is big. Can you touch him? Oh. Good job, honey. He's an animal. He's an animal. Mm -hmm. He's a big, strong animal who's being really sweet. I still have a treat for Huh? What's on him? It's just part of his skin. Can Daddy get a picture of you sitting right there for just a second? You hold on to the hump. He's you not going anywhere, and your mom's yeah. not going to let he go of it. It's okay. You want to try? And you can set your bottom right here. And, and hold, hold on, on to, to him. him. And he's not going to do anything. Do you want to? And your mama can still hold your leg. You want to try? You want to be a cowboy? You want to be a cowboy and sit right here? Look how nice he's being. Hold on to the hump. Oh, and your mom can't hold you. Let's See, see you're a cowboy. Oh, Look at that smile. You're a cowboy. Oh, oh, cowboy riding a Brahmin pole. Can Look at you. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Daddy, awesome. Look at Daddy. Awesome. Can you smile again? <laughs> <laughs> look at you. You're a cowboy riding a Brahmin bull. Oh, boy. You can grow up, be PBR now. You're mm -hmm. going to have it in your blood. They're smart like an equine almost more than they are like commercial cows. The respect that you give them, it's kind of like with people or anything, you know, you you treat them with respect and uh, dignity and they'll return a lot of it back. They need to be handled fairly. They can be very rank because they're very smart. And, and if you don't treat them fairly, they're like, fine, screw you. I'm just gonna run over you or I'm gonna jump that fence or I'm just... Um, yeah. Yeah, um, if, if you're thinking you're going to be thinking ahead of them, be careful. Because <laughs> they're hard to outthink. Because uh -huh. if you're not on your toes, they'll be thought around you uh -huh. and be out in front. I guess it's important, too, for the beginner or people that don't have livestock to be aware of what you're getting into. It's kind of like a child. You can't throw them in the playpen and, and go to the beach and come back and, you know, they've got to have you to... A little to bit of dedication it, to know, them. And you got to you got to do your job and you need to do it pretty close to, to right, you know, and, and keep them looked after and taken care of. No shortcuts? <sighs> Not many, no. <laughs> uh-uh. And w when you see it, uh, see them not being taken care of and all that, that's heartbreaking to us sometimes. Yeah, uh, enough uh, tough luck will come your way sooner or later. You know, that's that's not what you want to see. And you wish those folks would quit. <laughs>
Her name's Noelle. She was born Noelle. on Christmas Day. Oh my gosh. That's cute. She's going to come anywhere. It's my doggy. Oh, look at those buck teeth. I love it. Hello, love. That whole thing was filled. We've eaten about two thirds of our onions. But they have to be air dried. We're coming through this way. Let's walk through here. So, get a brush. This is the one that Ethelyn works on. Okay. Look at that. Her name is Missy. Here's something I do to all my cows and cows that I meet of other people's. Yes, I can. They have a good sense of smell. And they smell each other and blow in each other's and that's noses. Like but, so do I. <laughs> but they just is sort of a greeting and then they're like, oh. That's what you're about. Yeah. Well, it's not so scary, sweetheart. Look how sweet she is. Look how sweet she is. Look at her She should put her head up. Look at how sweet those eyes are. Oh, hello. Oh, there's such a good stretch. Oh. Such a much stretch. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's my favorite thing on a bra. Yeah. <laughs> that little Look chair. at your sweet stretch. Yeah. Oh, so this is why I girl. fell in love with this breed. They just have so much more personality. <laughs> so um, registered Brahmins are a little bit on the pricey side. Um, you can get a registered weaned Brahmin heifer for probably somewhere between $35 and $6,500. Now, bulls are about half that price, only because how many bulls do you need <laughs> and things. Not that they're any lesser. Now, of course, some of the very top lines in Texas, I'm sure there's bulls and, and genetics that bring over 100 grand, you know, at some of these. But in this area, you're looking at about that price range. These are all girls. They're heifers. Heifer just is a term that means she hasn't had a calf yet. <laughs> Abner, do you want to meet Star? Mm -hmm. Star is very sweet. Star yeah. loves attention. I smell like treats still, but I don't have any. I'm going she's all right. Oh, no, does she eat Now, she's treats. got more of a bump right here. Okay. So what is she's that? She's been cosmetically dehorned. Because of where she came from and her lines and how highly bred she is, she was cosmetically dehorned. That means when she was a little calf, they sliced the hide open, they took the horn buds off, they shaped her head to look like she was a polled animal, which is a Brahmin that naturally isn't gonna create horns. And there are breeding lines of polled Brahmins just so that people don't have to dehorn, because that's a little gruesome sometimes. So I do it very young on my calves. I dehorn with an iron that, um, and I do it when they're just a week old so that it, they get over it quick. <laughs> so that's why she has a very pointy head <laughs> because she was cosmetically, it's, she had plastic surgery to have a, this beautiful show it's head. A cheek, it's like a cheekbone. Yes, she's yes. Got her. her top knot is a little pointy. Her sister's is a little bit more moderate looking, but when you do this when they're young, you're not exactly sure how it's gonna come out. Exactly. When she was a calf, she came out of Texas. Okay. She is an embryo calf. What that means, this one and that one, they're full sisters. They're four days apart. Okay. But they're full sisters. How's that happening? Yeah. How that happens is their mom was a donor cow and they collected ovums from oh, her. Oh, I see. And then in a petri dish, they put semen in and created an embryo. And then the embryos were put in recipient cows. Gotcha. So, so similar to how artificial, well, like IVF yeah, or okay. in vitro fertilization. Yeah, in vitro. Yeah, there we go. That's it. the word yeah. I was looking mm -hmm. for. So their sire is um, a bull called um, HK X-Ray 825. <laughs> and what's really interesting about him is he is a clone of a very famous bull. Interesting. It was 3XHK X-Ray, I believe. Um, I may have that, sure. his name wrong. So their sire is a replica. <laughs> How funny. And these uh, two heifers came out of um, HK cattle, which is um, Henry Clay Koontz's original herd. So some really foundation stuff. Um, and when she does that, I'll be like, you can't control your liquor. And their tongues are really rough. So, That's um, cute. So most all of my other calves and heifers here are natural born. Just means they were made the regular way. And how old did you say she is? She was born May 26th. She's a year and a couple months old. 
So she's going to be huge. She's going to be bigger than Spartacus. So um, Brahmins live longer than these European cows, but they don't mature as fast. So they're not done growing till three or four years old. They do not hit breeding age to about 24 months. So like a black Angus cow could probably get pregnant at a year, possibly even a little younger. And a Brahmin bull can perform at that age. Typically, you wouldn't want these European breeds to have, you want them to have their first calf at about two years old. A Brahmin's not even going to get pregnant till it's two years old. But there are Brahmin cows still having calves at 20 years old. Wow. And that would be unheard of for these European breeds. Another thing I like about them with their heat tolerance, especially in our um, August here in July kind of summers, is that um, there have been studies done, and a Black Angus cow, her thriftiness starts to go downhill when the temperatures hit 80 degrees. Not that, you know, she's suffering, but her thriftiness of how she's going to eat and everything else is going downhill. At 80 degrees in the sun, she's going to be seeking shade and water and not grazing as much. Brahmins aren't affected by the heat to about 95 or 100 degrees. So when you have these black Anguses seeking the shade and not eating, the Brahmins are just laying in the sun going, it's just getting just right. <laughs> so I like that. The longevity, although they don't mature as fast, they live a lot longer. So I like that too about them. How can you tell whenever one of your Brahmin aren't happy? If they're having, um, well, a, like, if they're attitude-y or, ha I mean, is it just them oh, okay. being, like, no. throwing themselves around yeah. a little bit? Yeah. Or are well, you saw that other time? one. She was just kind of, Flighty. she was tighter. Yeah. When they're relaxed and they'll stand and they'll drop their head or if they'll chew their cud or if they'll swallow and do those kinds of things, they're very relaxed. Because if they're on alert, they're not going to be thinking about eating or just standing. Okay. They're going to be tense, just a lot like a horse. They're, okay. they're going to be tighter muscled. Their head's going to be up. Their eyes are going to be a little more open. They're going to be watching their surroundings more. They have that, you know, fight or flight and that response. They're not quite as quick responders um, as horses are. Horses probably have some of the fastest reflexes, but cattle can be pretty quick if they're startled or yeah, scared. Yeah. If um, she doesn't want you around, she's just had a baby and she's being very maternal and protective, they will shake their head at you first. Oh, really? You know, and it's kind of attitude? a, you know, and they may kind of blow like a deer, but yeah. it's a cow blow, you know, it's a, you know, mm -hmm. kind of a warning yeah. <laughs> and things. And they would much rather scare you with the head shake and the snort, not scare you, but get you to leave. Communicate. If you don't, they may put their head down, and um, I have some, I call it a bluff. They will take two or three steps with their head down like they're taking you out, and some don't bluff. <laughs> right. So all this extra skin actually does serve a purpose. So what makes them a little more heat tolerant is that per square inch, they have about 20% more sweat glands than a European cow. Well, also all this extra skin, she has about 20% more skin than a European cow. So that combined gives her a better ability to sweat and dissipate heat. In the winter when it's really cold, they can take that skin and kind of scrunch it up and it kind of gives them a little more insulation. Roman cattle are definitely made for warm weather. They can handle the cold just fine. Um, I personally love that I have this big barn and they can come in anytime it's cold or rainy. They can handle the cold, especially if they were to have a windbreak and adequate feed. Um, there's, Brahmin, there's a Brahmin herd, registered Brahmin herd up in Canada. So they can handle the cold weather. What they don't do very well is um, most Brahmin folks don't like to calve in really cold weather. A lot do, but they probably have a good barn and they probably have a stall that they can heat or put a heat lamp in. But for me personally, my bull is in six months out of the year. I calve from about uh, mid-April to November. Don't eat my pecan tree. When it's warm weather, the calves just start a lot, lot better. So a black Angus, you would not want to calve her in August and September. It's just too hot for her. That's perfect for calving a Brahmin calf. So, oh, see, she's like, oh, 
please do that. Just love me. If I walk out just when they're out grazing and I have a brush in my hand, I get mobbed. Like, scratch my, this is another favorite place. This tail head and the tail will you go up. You see her leaning on the like, tail. She's like, oh, oh yeah, please. Oh, scratch my tail. <laughs> And see, look, she's picking her leg up. Look How at that. funny. <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah. Like, I won't use the term halter breaking. I'll say halter training. Right. They're just so smart. Gentling just means getting them used to desensitize like a horse. You know, um, when I wean my calves, off of their mamas. The first thing I do is I wean them in a group and I fence line wean. So the mamas see them on the other side. You are gonna fall over, <laughs> girl. So I fence line weaned because it's a lot less stressful. And um, then, um, and they get fed and I'll put them in a small pen as a group and like maybe have a stick with a brush on it and I'll just get them used to it. Some are naturally curious and let me touch them, but that's just, gentling you know i don't rough house them i don't throw a halter and time to a post right off and let them fight it out and figure it out i want them these cows to me have so much personality and so sweet that um i like gentling them <laughs> and Absolutely. i think you just get a nicer sweeter animal well, so when i got this cow um she got here in april she was not halter broke so but she had a sweet personality. So I just made friends with her with a brush and treats <laughs> and good food. And she just had a really nice personality anyways. So the first time I put a halter on her, I just let her drag a lead rope. And what would happen is when she'd step on it, she'd kind of go, oh, I'm stuck. And she'd learn to give to it. The next thing was to kind of tie her to a post, but stay there. And she'd kind of pull and she'd be like, oh, and in about five minutes or less, they learn to just stand there with a loose lead. See, she's going to step on her lead and then she'll be like, wait, where? she'll have to move her foot or she can't move. So she has herself caught. But this is exactly how you do with the little weanling calves. You know, you let them drag a rope in a safe area where you can watch them. You don't want them getting tangled or hurt, but um, they learn to kind of give and see she's backed off of it. Um, then, after I've tied them to a post and they learn to stand loosely tied, I just take their lead rope and I just ask for a step or two. And um, get off the chewing. So, let's say she's just a, a young weaned calf. She's a little big for that. I can't, if she's stubborn, pull this calf straight, okay? It would be a tug of war and she weighs more than me. So, you just pull them in a circle, just kind of like a horse, because you can pull them off center pretty easy. And then they learn to kind of give to that and stuff. So it's just, it's just a prop. Don't you eat my pecan tree. <laughs> May I come say hello yeah. to you? Yeah. Hi. If I give you a, like. See, and she's, she's sniffing back. And she's looking at you now, see? You just made friends with her. You just, that's the first secret. I'm not sure I was supposed to give it away of being a well, Brahmin whisperer. Say. Well, that's what they say to do with horses, yeah. too. I don't have see? treats for you. I sorry. No, she just put her nose up to breathe on you again, oh. is what she was doing. Oh, you were breathing, Sharon? Oh. Oh, my. Make friends. <laughs> no, she like where's her favorite anyway oh, oh, do flap yes you stepped up to me <laughs> okay Thank okay you. so she's a good example of this brahmin eye too see how she can protect it so easily um there's a her uh, breed herford one of the things herfords are known for is eye cancer okay it's a very predominant thing and if you wanted to know which breed had it the most it would be herford okay Brahmins have it the very least. It's almost unheard of. And including the disease pink eye that cows can get that can be carried by flies, they're very resistant to that. This is when I say she can't hold her liquor. <laughs> I think she's getting the sweat and the dirt off of me. Or she's just like, thanking, that salt. She's thanking me for your grooming. Ah, it's perfect. Just so <laughs> Ow! That's so it, how is their, their, you said their tongues are rough? It's like, like sandpaper? sandpaper. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gotta be able to groom properly, right? Yes. Like kitty cat. Yes, it's like a cat tongue times a hundred. <laughs> I don't know if we can get a big tongue out there. There's lots of pictures. Ow! Ow! <laughs> okay. <laughs> very, very, very scratchy. Nippy? See? Ow! See how rough yeah. it is on the one side? It's That's very hilarious. <laughs> 
She's like, quit messing with my <laughs> What's your favorite part about Bryles Farm? I guess just getting out in the fields and, you know, and connecting with God, you know, out on my own and away from the people and uh, the uh, hustle and bustle and that sort of, to me, yeah. I always want people to feel like they can call and, and come meet these Brahmin cows or meet us and see what we're doing. I've met so many amazing people. And it doesn't matter if you're buying a cow right now. If you just want to learn about the breed, contact us. We are always happy to give you a handful of treats and, you know, try to protect you, <laughs> but let the nice cows come meet you. Um, but. Brahmin cows sometimes have to be experienced <laughs> and, um, you know, we're not fancy. Most all our money goes into our cows and the land and, and just a good, simple, honest life. But we are always happy to share that philosophy with people. Absolutely. Thank you guys for taking the time and sharing a sunset with you. Oh. That was awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You're going to see Abner. I was going to see if he wanted a quick tractor ride. Ooh. He would say yes in a heartbeat. Go find him. You're going to make that boy's night. He loves tractors. Yeah, he'll let you drive and hold the steering wheel. But we'll be right here. Right, buddy. You ready?